During this training, we are using a screen capture method that allows you to see whenever the mouse is clicked. So whenever we do a left mouse click, you'll see a red indication, and whenever we do a right mouse click, you'll see the blue indication. After you have successfully installed and registered SpeedEdit, you'll have a SpeedEdit 2 icon on the desktop if you elected to put one there. Uh, you could also have a SpeedEdit icon in the Quick Start menu down here, but if you told the installer not to put an icon in either of those places, you can go to the Start menu, you can go to Programs, come down to New Tech, and then go to Speed Edit. Now, inside the Speed Edit folder, you'll find the Frequently Asked Questions document, the License Agreement, the Speed Edit launch icon, support via email, support via the web, a Speed Edit user's guide, and an updates document. To launch Speed Edit, go ahead and click on the New Tech Speed Edit 2 icon. When Speed Edit launches, you'll be presented with the Welcome to Speed Edit requester, and here you can start a new project and you can pick from presets in both NTSC and PAL for high definition and standard definition, or you can pick from projects that you've recently been working on. Any recently opened projects will show up in a list here, and you could select one of these and open the project. Now, if you want to start a new project and you don't see the settings that you're looking for here in the presets, you can click on Custom. This will launch the Project Settings Requester, and this has a much more extensive list of presets for you to choose from, but also allows you to dial in your own settings for a project. And you can work in uh, resolutions anywhere up to 2048 by 2048. We have a variety of frame rates that you can choose from, anywhere from 12 frames per second all the way up to 60 frames per second a variety of aspect ratios that you can work in, and you can choose to work in interlace or progressive mode. If you do create a custom preset that you want to be able to save, you do have the ability to save a preset to this list, as well as delete presets from the list. Once you've selected the project that you want to work in, you're ready to go. The very first time you launch SpeedEdit, it may look something like this, and SpeedEdit's interface is made up of a series of non-modal windows, so you can organize and put the interface in whatever order you want. So the way I like to organize the interface is to take my output window, and if you don't happen to have an output window, uh, you can generate one by going to the window pop-up and coming down and clicking on video output, and that's going to give you an output window. I'm going to put that over here in the corner, and then I'm going to go ahead and size the interface so that it matches up with the side of my monitor over here. Now this monitor uh, is sizable, and you can drag it out to whatever size you want it to be. Uh, you also can right click on it, and there are a series of variables for the monitor, and these are just for the display of the monitor. And you can change things like the size of the video that's being displayed. Uh, you also have an option for best fit, and that way if you're interactively sizing the window, the video is always going to display appropriately. You do have the ability to add overlays like Action Safe and Title Safe. Now I end up with a blank space over here, and I like to fill that with a Add Media window. So again, I'm going to come to my window pop-up, and I'm going to select Add Media. And this again is a non-modal window, and I'm going to go ahead and position this over here, and you can size it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this window, and then size it so that it fits the area. There are also brightness and contrast controls on the monitor, and these controls only control the display of this monitor, not the output of speed edit. There is a volume control as well, and this does control the output of the audio from the computer. All of the audio for speed edit is input and output through the audio card in the computer. Speed Edit's editor defaults to its two window mode, and each of the two windows has a variety of tabs along the top, and you can change the layout of Speed Edit's windows. Each window can be a storyboard, or a timeline, a spreadsheet view of the project, a control tree, or a file bin. And we're going to go ahead and set this up so we've got the storyboard up on top and the timeline down on the bottom. Now, you also have some pop up menus along the top. You also have some buttons for cut, copy, and paste, delete, your undo and redo. We also have our sub-project. This is to create sub-projects out of selected clips. And then down along the bottom, we have controls uh, for the clip that is currently selected, as well as control for the editor itself. 
and uh, we'll go ahead and take a closer look at this once we get into editing. The two window setup can be changed and if you put the cursor right between the two windows you'll see that the cursor changes to an upward and downward facing arrow with a horizontal line. Once it's in that mode you can left click and you can now scale this interface and you can also change it from a horizontal view to a vertical view. You can right click and switch to vertical and display the windows side by side. Right click again, switch to horizontal. You can also use this menu to recenter the two panes if you've manually adjusted them. You also have the options for maximizing the top and the bottom pane, and this would just make, say, the top pane our storyboard, the entire view. Uh, this can also be done by double clicking on the tab. So if I go to a timeline here, that's going to give me the timeline view, but if I double click on timeline up here, I'm going to have just a single pane view of the timeline double click on timeline again to bring back my two window view. There are a few preferences we should set up before we begin our edit and let's go to our window pop-up and select the preferences option. This will launch your preferences menu and let's go ahead and take a look at the background rendering options. Now the first one is your cache path and this is the area on the hard drive that's going to get used for speed edit to do all of its data manipulation and rendering and number crunching. So we want to make this the fastest drive on the system. If you have a video RAID set up you want to go ahead and make your cache folder on that video RAID or if you just have multiple drives in a system it's best if you can set up your cache folder on a drive other than the drive that's used for the operating system. The operating system will use that same drive for paging and this could slow things down. Now if you do only have one drive in the system you can use it and that's what I have right here on my computer even though it's a very fast computer I only have a C drive installed on the machine. So I went out to the C drive and I created a folder called cache and then I simply click here and I navigate to that cache folder. So the C drive and then the cache folder and then I select it. Now the next two options are for your background rendering profile. Now you have one for standard def projects and one for high def projects. And what this is saying is this is telling SpeedEdit when to start background rendering. Now, as a default, it says render if there are more than four SD layers, and again, this is four layers of video that are playing with Alpha Channel simultaneously, or two HD streams that are layered playing on top of each other. If it's any more than that, then start background rendering. Now, you do have the ability to change these variables and increase where that background render starts, and the reason you might want to do that is if you have a more powerful machine. The more powerful your machine is, the more RAM you have, the faster the processor, the better the graphics card, the more front side bus speed. All of these variables play into the real time performance you'll get out of speed edit on your computer. So start out with the default settings and then go ahead and try and bump them up as you get projects that have more than four layers of SD or two layers of HD and see where the sweet spot for performance on your computer is. Now, conversely, you could also decrease where the background render is going to begin if you're working on a very low power machine. So if you're working on a very low power laptop or an older desktop, you can go ahead and bump those settings down so the background render begins earlier and you'll get smoother play out when you're working with your project. SpeedEdit has the ability to work with an offset on the clips and this means when a clip is brought into the editor it's going to trim off a certain amount on the front end and the back end to accommodate for transitions. This is also sometimes known as headers and that can be set right here on the automatic in out offset. Defaults to one second and you can change it to more or less than that. I prefer working with one second offsets, but if you're not familiar with working with offsets and you just want to work primarily on the timeline, you can turn the offsets off if you're more comfortable working that way. You do have the ability to set up the maximum number of undos you have, and this can be set to infinite, but it does default to 100. All of the undos within SpeedEdit are actually saved to the hard drive, and this is very nice as the system can be shut down, and you can come back to a project days later, fire the system up from a cold state, and still have the ability to undo things in your project. There are many other preferences that you can set inside of this window, but we just wanted to work with the basics to get you going. 
SpeedEdit also works with dual monitor video cards. If you can attach a second monitor to your computer system, then you can take the non-modal windows in SpeedEdit's interface and stretch them across two monitors. You could also take your video output monitor and put it on the second monitor and expand it to full screen so you have a full screen video output while you're working live with SpeedEdit. SpeedEdit also works with several video output cards we can output the video through the Firewire port and then we could hook up to a camera. We could then have a video output from that camera going to a monitor and that'll give us a live video output to a monitor from SpeedEdit as we edit. SpeedEdit also works with the Blackmagic series of video cards. So if you have a Blackmagic card in your system, you'll be able to select that from this list and use that as an output to an external monitor and be able to see the output of SpeedEdit live while you're editing.